And we got Joey back in this video, founding member of the Janic Journal. This video is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I recorded a lot of content over like the course of a couple weeks. It wasn't a consistent video, way too much content, just not good. So in this video, um, the product is already finished and I'm just gonna be showing you uh, what we did, how we did it, but it's not gonna be a step-by-step -step as we did it type deal. So we got Joey on the camera. It's nice to have a cameraman, haven't had that in a while. Um, so this mower is going to be built for US LMRA rules. US LMRA rules say that in a prepared chassis, which is what most all their classes are, um, you need to have a clutch setup that's based on disengaging the belt. So what that means is you can't have a centrifugal clutch, you can't have like a snowmobile CVT type deal. So you basically have to use something very similar to a stock setup. So I'll show you what we've got going on here and then we'll flip the mower up, show you the top, um, what else we have. This is a setup here I made. I made four of these, um, three for the mowers I'm building, one extra. Pretty much based off what I made on my old SP years ago. Um, speaking of that, that's what these pulleys are from. Five inch in the back, six and a half inch in the front. Um, so I'm gonna use that as my basis of, of what we're gonna do for this as far as gearing. Um, these are stock size, three and a half inch pulleys. Uh, either pulleys your V groove and your flat. Um, those are stock on Craftsman's. So, you know, this is a Craftsman frame. I'm, I'm using s as much parts as I can off of the mowers that I um, use to, to, to build these from. So what we've got here is a piece of 5 8 chromoly steel, um, some one inch uh, flat stock, quarter inch thick, with a couple holes in it. And um, what I've got is that center drilled uh, hole is tapped 3 8 by 16 threads per inch. And what that allows me to do is just bolt this one idler right on. That's also my pivot point. Um, I'm sure you saw it earlier. Yeah, you got a hand there, Joey? So that's it. So you can see that this one actually doesn't move. It's all about this one uh, moving. That should be plenty to disengage. One thing you have to remember when you're building these clutch setups though, is that the, is the direction of your motor, which way it's gonna be spinning. So I know this one's gonna be spinning this way, which is gonna pull on the rear pulley for the transmission, making this side the taut side of the belt. So your clutch always has to be on the opposite side. The clutch can't be on this side or else it would spring itself open under the load and strain of the belt being pulled. Another part I scavenged off of those Craftsman lawnmowers is this spring here. Um, it's a stock spring. I've got like six of them, so I figured might as well use it. I just welded a couple different nuts here, so that'll give me a little bit of adjustment if it's not taut enough. Uh, I think it is, I think it'll work. Um, and one more thing down here before I flip the mower up to show you is that I do not have my belt guards in yet. I haven't put any of those in yet. Um, I'll put them in next video, show it a little bit better. But uh, basically, you know, you want probably one on either side of your drive pulley and your transmission pulley. And also, of course, you're going to need one here. And then the one on the clutch pedal that moves, or the clutch pulley that moves rather, you're going to want a guide that, that follows. Um, follows that pulley. You're not going to want one, a stationary one like all the other all the other guides. And when I'm setting up my other guides, I'm probably going to do something similar to this. Just weld a nut. That way I can thread the bolts in, uh, thread the bolts into the nuts to set up my belt guides. So since the last video, one more thing I did was I cut these fenders down to get the seat nice and low. I took about six inches out of the back, uh, lowered everything down pretty good. Got four new seats off of eBay, plastic cheapo models, but of course cheap in plastic and eBay all means less material and lightweight. So those things are gonna be super light. They fit just perfectly in there, just a tiny bit of room. So uh, let me show you exactly why I did what I did. So with a little bit of light from Joey here, um, you can see my crossbar that I made here. The factory ones elevate the fender up uh, probably three, four inches. That's about, that's three quarter inch uh, with some eighth inch flat. So that's seven eighths of an inch. Um, so I also raised up my fender in the process of cutting this big, huge relief pocket for the, for the seat. I actually raised the fender itself so that I have clearance for the tires. Um, US LMRA rules, you can't just radius where your tires are. You either have to do a continuous cut all the way down or you can move it up. So I moved it up a little bit and then I'll flare it as well to get my half inch clearance off of the tire. So uh, in essence, I, I raised the fender as well as lowered the seat. Um, the bottom of the seat can not be any lower than 13 inches off of the ground per US LMRA rules. And I'm trying to get the angle from the side. 
But that's going to leave us also um, that one inch or seven eighths of an inch above the frame that the bottom of the fender is. It's going to leave us just enough room for our shift lever. Uh, I haven't caught the slot in the front yet, but it's going to come out somewhere just under the seat. There'll be a slot somewhere under here with our shift lever. Another advantage to these fenders, or this mower rather, is even with the fenders in the stock location, aside from being an inch higher, I'm able to move the seat back two more inches. Now I'm probably gonna run it about the same as I did on my SP from my old Craftsman, which would be about right about here. But Joey's voice concerns. Accommodates he, me. Yeah, he wants move to- Move it back a little bit. He, he wants the seat back a little farther. Not sure exactly how it's gonna work out with handling and everything, but we're gonna have the possibility. So probably just drill two sets of holes for the seat. Also have my uh, little blanks to cover up where the stock shifters were, cup holder. Got all that stuff ready to roll too. But this video is mostly about the clutch. I just wanted to show what we did with the fenders as well. Um, you gotta get your seat nice and low. Again, USLMA rules. The bottom of the seat cannot be any lower than 13 inches off the ground. So this little eight horse motor is just set on here. No piston, no anything. This is just to get our, uh, our pulley on the front. And um, now we can get into what we've got going on uh, up here with the clutch, the actual workings of it. So this is what we got going on up here. Um, our clutch pedal part is a 5 a shaft bent. Um, don't recommend using a map gas torch like I did to heat it up. It took forever. Um, and then also just some regular 5 a shaft here. Chrome molly for all of it. Um, the only regret I have on this, it kind of looks a little bit unfinished, um, is that the shaft is on top. And also that these two little um, bronze bushings are now captive in the clutch. Obviously those can't come off the ends. Um, you've got welded joints on either side of it. So from up here, we can see really what's driving this thing, the actual mechanism that's moving it. So when I, when I uh, depress the clutch pedal, you can see that this shaft, the pivot point spinning, um, you can see the clutch spring down here. You can pretty much get an idea of all the workings um, from up here after seeing it down there. So one more thing on a little bit of a safety note here is it's also in the rules, protrusions. You don't want any protrusions, any sharp edges, anything like that. Um, I still got these stock clutch clutch pedal covers, I guess you'd call them, from the Craftsman's. Uh, I'm gonna slide them on as much as I can and then cut any excess off of the clutch pedal. You don't want anything sticking out that's gonna injure yourself or anybody else. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Uh, one more thing is that blue belt under here. That is a Husky belt from Tractor Supply Company. It's right here. Plug, plug. Yeah, like we're going to get sponsors. The only people that sponsor these videos are Go Power Sports, and they haven't even thought about contacting us. So Husky Belt Kevlar Reinforced. Um, I've had good luck with them. Next video, we'll be doing the MCP brakes on the mowers, setting up the master cylinder, pedals, all that stuff. So until then, we'll catch you guys. Janic Journal.